so okay um, let's start uh, good evening and good morning to everyone who is uh, uh, here with us uh, and um, now we have uh, our open uh, virtual uh, seminar for, uh, at uh, uh, neural networks and deep learning uh, lab at MIPT. And uh, if somebody don't know me, I'm a head of the lab. And my name is Mikhail Burtsov. And uh, today I would like uh, to share with you uh, some results uh, from uh, our research uh, on uh, uh, memory uh, transformers. And also, um, I invited our colleagues uh, from um, University of Massachusetts Lowell, um, uh, from Text Machine uh, Laboratory. Uh, hello, Anna, uh, Lance, David, and maybe uh, other people also here and uh, to discuss uh, possible uh, uh, ways to collaborate on uh, the, to develop this uh, research further, maybe. And um, so, uh, as I've said uh, like a couple of moments earlier, I suggest that uh, first I will present uh, our results and then we will have uh, question and answers and uh, then uh, discussion. Uh, okay, uh, let's start. So uh, this uh, work is actually um, have started uh, in, I think that it has started in March. Well, something strange happened, sorry. Um, it started with a previous talk on the next generation of language models. Uh, you can find a link uh, to slides and to video recording of uh, this talk here on these links. And uh, this was a, like a talk where I've tried to summarize and to discuss some ideas uh, which can be used to extend current uh, transform transformer uh, based models and uh, from this uh, seminar uh, uh, there was uh, some ideas and i will show you uh, them and uh, so one of them was developed into the study which uh, i'm presenting uh, right now so what uh, was um, uh, the starting point uh, for this research? So if uh, we look on some of the problems for transformer language models, uh, then we can um, find uh, some high level issues like that um, we have um, a fusion of global and local si uh, signals uh, in this architecture. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, this means that we have um, uh, token representations, and when we update them uh, in our encoder, then uh, we add some global information to every token, and then these like we can say that we enrich this logo, uh, local. Uh, embedding subtoken embeddings uh, on one hand, but on the other hand, we can say that we are like diffusing this local information and uh, add noise to global signal. So it, it's not clear if it's good or bad, but we can try to um, create a system which can separate these global and local systems signals. And um, this is, uh, was considered as a, uh, one problem. Another problem, uh, as I suggested, is um, absence of storage for knowledge, some external knowledge which is related to the current uh, task. 
for example, if we have uh, uh, our like bird uh, model and mask language model, then maybe we need some external information to fill in a uh, masked subtoken. But we have no way to store, like temporarily during processing, store some external information to make decision, more informed decision, how we should fill in mask token. And um, uh, the other way uh, to um, make transformer architectures better suited for language -like processing uh, maybe is introducing of some uh, structural constraints specific to um, uh, language because uh, self-attention mechanism it's more or less general uh, and uh, compared for convolutional uh, architectures uh, in uh, computer vision, which has much uh, stronger uh, uh, bias in, in the architecture, which allows it more efficiently solve uh, computer vision related problems. So maybe we need to uh, extend transformer-based architectures with some specific structural constraint, which allows uh, it to solve uh, language modeling tasks better and all other uh, natural language processing tasks better. And also uh, this architecture, uh, transformer architecture, uh, which is based on the self-attention, when every token attempt to every other token is uh, has a poor scaling because it, it scales quadratically as every token need to, att to attend to every other uh, token. So um, uh, in this previous talk, uh, I have suggested some possible directions to improve uh, language models given these problems. And uh, here in this presentation, we will consider study which is uh, um, uh, which falls into two uh, possible research directions from uh, the previous talk. The first one is uh, to solve the problem of fusion of global and local sequence. Uh, we need to introduce some memory to store non-local representations. Uh, so these some representations which can store uh, global information about our tasks, task uh, like, like some relations between tokens or uh, any other information which is not uh, specific to the some uh, um, subtokens, uh, but uh, maybe related to sets of uh, these subtokens and so on. And um, the second one is that uh, we have poor scaling. And uh, the idea is that we can uh, add some uh, memory as bottleneck for attention, so we can reduce number of uh, attention uh, operations we need to calculate our output. So, for example, we can have an architecture where we have not um, all the uh, elements of our sequence, so all the tokens, all the words attend to each other but we can have something like first uh, we have memory and we uh, memory attends to all the uh, elements of the sequence and then every element of the sequence attends only to the memory so when if uh, like uh, here if we extend our uh, sequence then the amount of computation scales not quadrat quadratically but uh, linearly uh, because uh, this sequence attends to, to the memory of uh, the fixed length. So these uh, were two ideas which we, we have tried to uh, study. So okay, uh, this just to remind you what we, uh, the path the path we have passed like during the last uh, maybe five years, it's actually very rapid progress in the field uh, from 
feed forward and barren and architectures to transformer like uh, architectures uh, right now. And uh, spe specifically, uh, introduction of transformer and uh, different uh, unsupervised uh, training tasks uh, for it, uh, like uh, mask language model and BERT. Uh, it's really a uh, like huge uh, revolution in the field and uh, a lot of different architectures uh, were proposed uh, to improve uh, basic um, like vanilla transformer architecture. Um, so uh, what is what is um, my, uh, the, the main idea behind self-attention uh, layer? Basically, we can boil it down uh, to two steps. So uh, let let look uh, here on the left side on this diagram. Uh, here we have uh, token vectors. It's representation of our sequence. So for every element of uh, the six uh, of uh, the sequence, we have some vector uh, representation, and we have uh, basically uh, two steps. On the first step, we perform uh, self-attention, which means that uh, we calculate how our current token. So we are going uh, token by token, and for every token, we calculate how it is related to all other tokens uh, with the help of some uh, uh, mapping, we calculate uh, attention, and then we accumulate all this uh, information from all these, from all other tokens of the sequence, from all other vectors, into some uh, vector of information which is related to our current vector, and then we update our uh, representation for the current token with this accumulated vector. And we perform these uh, for every token of our sequence. So we can have, so, um, uh, so we can say that we have two operations like calculate attention for every element and uh, accumulate uh, this information from all the sequence and update every element. So this is basically what we are doing when we uh, calculate uh, our uh, self-attention layer in transformer arch architecture. And let me remind you that um, original transformer uh, paper, uh, it proposes to use this uh, uh, self-attention layer in the classic uh, encoder decoder uh, architecture. So if, if you look at it, 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 it's just like the same picture as we can see uh, for machine translation, but with BLSTM layers uh, before, uh, like in the Google machine translation uh, system. But here, every layer is replaced. Uh, it's, it's not BLSTM, but it's a uh, self-attention layer. So we have encoder where we consequently pass our sequence uh, through the sequence of uh, self-attention layer. And then uh, we have a contextual uh, representation for every token of the input sequence. And uh, for machine translation, it will be representation of uh, the source uh, language. And then we use uh, these uh, vectors as an input for every layer in decoder. So uh, during uh, decoding uh, of every element in our target sequence, we have attention to already uh, decoded the tokens on the one hand, and also we have attention to all the uh, to representation, to representations of all elements of the input sequence. So this is uh, how it basically works. And the current study uh, will be devoted, all our modifications uh, were done to this part, to encoder part. So we are not modifying uh, in a decoder in any way. What we do, we uh, change only encoder part.
Uh, we change this encoder, uh, uh, basically we change one encoder layer. So, okay, what is uh, the, the first and the most straightforward idea here? So how we can add memory to our encoder? Um, so it's, it's very simple, actually. We, don't, we even don't need to change uh, our architecture. What we need to do, we just uh, can append, prepend our uh, in, um, input sequence. So before we add our uh, input sequence uh, to the input of our layer, we first uh, put sequence of some memory tokens. Uh, uh, before uh, elements of the sequence. And then we pass these uh, concatenated uh, sequence through our uh, like traditional self-attention layer. And during, when, when we're passing it, uh, uh, and we can update our memory tokens, and during update, we can accumulate some information from uh, elements of our sequence or from other elements of the memory and update our elements here. And on the other hand, when we update uh, elements, uh, vectors for elements for uh, input sequence, we can update them depending on the other elements of the sequence and also on the uh, vectors uh, which are uh, stored in memory. So uh, from the start, um, we have considered a few like possible ways how to add these uh, memory tokens to the um, input sequence, but decided to use just uh, the first, the most straightforward uh, thing uh, to do this. And specifically, why we add them at the beginning of uh, the uh, sequence because uh, we wanted. Uh, uh, them to have uh, the same positional uh, embedding. So as we add positional embedding to all the tokens of our input sequence, we add them to our memory tokens as well. Uh, and if we have fixed memory size, uh, then during training, uh, mem memory tokens will always have uh, the same positional uh, encoding. And uh, this is why we wanted to add them at the beginning of uh, the sequence, and, uh, not, for example, at the end of the sequence. And if uh, the sequence can have a different length, different uh, size, then we will uh, have a different positional encodings to memory token. So what we have done, we introduced one memory token and add some number of these mem tokens at the beginning of uh, the sequence. And it was uh, the first um, uh, modification, uh, but here uh, we are not addressing uh, the problem of uh, scaling because uh, we still have uh, like, uh, self-attention to all elements of uh, the sequence. And then to test, uh, architecture which uh, uh, allows, us to, allows us to scale linearly uh, uh, on, on the one hand and on the other hand to better understand what are the limits for using memory in, the, in these uh, settings. We introduced also uh, the second architecture which we, call, we called, uh, so the first uh, architecture can be called memory transformer as we have memory tokens here. Uh, and uh, the second architecture uh, we called a memory bottleneck uh, transformer. And here we have a, a calculation for one uh, layer split on two steps. On the first step, we update uh, vectors for memory tokens. So here, for example, if, if we, this is uh, our input sequence, then first we update our uh, memory tokens. And uh, during update of these memory tokens, uh, our system can attend to the input uh, tokens as well as memory tokens. And then after we calculated and updated our memory tokens, then we can update 
elements of our sequence. But as I've said, we constrained attention for this element so they can attend only uh, vectors which are stored in memory tokens. And then uh, we perform attention over memory tokens and update our vectors uh, for uh, sequence elements. So in these settings, uh, for like vectors for uh, our sequence, vectors for our tokens can uh, include global information only by uh, accessing it uh, via memory because there is no direct attention to other tokens only for uh, memory and, and this can implement it only for the memory. So this is uh, the second architecture. So we have studied these two architectures and here is uh, like a warp up uh, for the studied um, architectures on the left hand side. It, it's a classical uh, architecture where his, here is attention as uh, this um, a yellow part and the uh, sequence update uh, is a green part and this uh, the dashed line, broken line is uh, 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 attention and uh, it's uh, our uh, mem transformer architecture where we have uh, attention both from memory and from sequence token and, uh, and update uh, them uh, with the same uh, operations. And here is a memory bottleneck transformer uh, where we first update our memory tokens with attention from the sequence tokens and then update sequence uh, vectors for sequence tokens with attention from the memory. Uh, okay. So uh, now I think that maybe we can have some questions about architectures. So for you to better understand the results later. So if somebody have a questions, question I suggest it's, but technical question, not discussion, I suggest to uh, ask it right now. Um. I have a question about the MEM bottleneck transform architecture. Uh, is it uh, true that uh, the bottleneck transformer make, makes less uh, computation operations because of uh, the small size of MEM, uh, small amount of MEM to tokens? Um, uh, actually, uh, I think that um, I have not estimated it in calculated number of operations directly, uh, but uh, uh, what I can say that it, it scales li linearly, but not quadratically. So I think that for some, maybe for small uh, sequences, it, it is not very beneficial, but for large sequences, it should be beneficial in terms of computation. Thank you. Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah, sure, David. Um, so my question is, so d does the number of memory tokens scale with the size of the sequence or is it a fixed number? Uh, in our experiments, it was a fixed number. Okay. Uh, so they, actually it's idea, the idea is that um, uh, when we train, uh, the network uh, learns how to control the memory and if you change size of the memory, maybe it, it is not good. And actually you will see in, in the results what is happening if we change size of the memory after training. Uh, I see. So, but there would be like an alternative where you could associate like a different memory token with each, for example, sentence, if it was a multi-sentence input, and then it would yeah. scale yeah. potentially linearly with the input. Yeah, it, actually, it one yeah. Uh, he, here is one of the possible like ideas. Then we can, if if you have like split your uh, sequence on sentences and then add sentence at the beginning of each sentence, you can add memory token, for example. Ah, 
So this is similar to the star transformer, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, with the relay token, but instead there's multiple relay tokens in a sense. Yes. Interesting, thank you. And in some sense, uh, these uh, mem tokens, they are uh, maybe they, that if, for example, if you insert uh, SEP tokens uh, after every sentence, then these SEP tokens can like, can be like memory tokens. Or for example, a mask token in uh, BERT, in mask language model, maybe serve as a, like some kind of memory token. Interesting. Okay, any other questions? Uh, hello, sorry, uh, I have somewhat a naive question. Uh, could you please elaborate a little bit on uh, what kind of information is stored in this uh, MAM tokens? Thank you. Uh, actually, it's, it's the question uh, what, uh, for myself, I would like to know, because uh, it turns out that um, these, uh, this is not a very big study. And as I've said, maybe we have started in April and May, we have a couple of months doing this. But uh, uh, for me personally, it, it is very it, it, like it, it was and it is very exciting because uh, it's like a you know it's like a discovery in some space of architectures because uh, I will show you results and for me it, it was very very interesting and fun to have all these structures what I have seen during this training and uh, what is uh, exactly stored in these uh, memory tokens. Uh, is uh, still open questions. And uh, I think that maybe we can uh, collaborate with um, a more computationally, uh, ling linguistically uh, minded uh, people to better understand the content of these memory tokens. Because uh, 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 when we start training, we have no specific meaning associated with these uh, memory tokens. Uh, what uh, our hypothesis that these tokens might be used for something by our system. And uh, after training, we can study if these uh, memory tokens was, uh, were useful or were not useful. And uh, this is like, I think that it's, it's one of the most fascinating part of, uh, of, of, of this uh, line of work. So any other questions? Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, yes, could you uh, tell what about segment embeddings? Basically, in BERT you have uh, token embeddings, position embeddings, and segment embeddings, and they are uh, summed together at the input. Uh, so do you use segment embeddings, and what kind of uh, segment embeddings do you add to memory tokens? Uh, no, mm, I hadn't used uh, segment embeddings because uh, I have experimented uh, with uh, like vanilla transformer architecture, uh, encoded decoder architecture, and uh, experiments were done for machine translation, and uh, th there is no uh, segment embeddings uh, in uh, the baseline architecture. They has a positional encoding, and but no. Segment. Okay, I see. It's not bird. Sorry. <laughs> yes, it's it's not bird. It, it's it's encoded decoder architecture. So basically, as I've said, uh, just to remind you, uh, we have encoded decoder architecture. So it's sequence to sequence model. It's not mask language model, and all experiments which I will report are done on the uh, machine translation task specifically translation from German to English. Okay, and as I've said, we modified this left part. So we added our, uh, basically what we've done, in the simplest case, we just added a memory token to all uh, our, uh, to all sequences in our uh, data set, and then feed it to the same architecture which is used uh, to traditional uh, transformer uh, encoder decoder. Uh, but for um, memory bottleneck, uh, we modified a bit uh, encoder layer. 
but uh, we uh, these uh, decoder layers uh, were untouched. Any other questions or we are going forward? Oh, I have just one more simple question. Okay. Like uh, on the slides, uh, it was mentioned that uh, only the tokens that are listed in the vocabulary are going to the memory tokens, like they are filtered somehow. So what's the nature of the vocabulary? Is there just a list of words or something? Or it's just a list of concepts? What, what's the vocabulary? No, no. Uh, uh, sorry for that. Uh, maybe I, I, I wasn't clear. Uh, we just uh, extended our vocabulary with a, a MAM token and added to the sequence. So, we, uh, ah, okay. and uh, this MAM token, so we repeat MAM token n times at the beginning of the sequence. So, so if we have like uh, memory size 10, this means that we have uh, 10 times, we insert 10 times memory, mem token, and then we have start token, then we have our input sequence, and then we have end token. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, in our... That seems clear. Thing. Mm -hmm. And for our output sequence, uh, there are uh, no, uh, there were no memory tokens. So output sequence is start token, output sequence, and token. Okay, so let's go to the most interesting part of our talk, uh, to the results. So as I've said, uh, what we have started, uh, we have used um, a machine translation task uh, from German to English. Uh, the data set the data set has uh, four and a half million pairs of uh, sentences and we started uh, two sizes of models the small model with uh, four uh, layers in decoder and four layers in encoder so it's in total eight layers and uh, also the base model which is small actually uh, uh, in terms of uh, BERT. It has a six layers in the encoder and six layer in the decoder. And all other parameters we have the same as in the original uh, transformer uh, paper. Okay. So let's start with the uh, first uh, comparing uh, our baseline uh, model with um, uh, our memory modifications. And here you can see on the left uh, panel uh, training uh, loss on our data set for uh, small models and uh, here uh, you can see that uh, the green one is a transformer baseline and uh, all these uh, like pink, uh, red and dark red are uh, memory transformer with different memory sizes, 5, 10 and 20 uh, memory tokens and uh, blue ones are memory bottleneck 10 and 20 uh, tokens. And uh, we also limited uh, uh, our sequences for train set for 100 uh, tokens. So what you can see here actually uh, that uh, at the beginning of training, like uh, if we look at the first 10 epochs of training, you can see that memory uh, uh, modifications outperform baseline. But then if you continue training for this small model, uh, then they have uh, the similar uh, similar loss. Uh, if uh, you look at the larger model, and here is uh, all these curves are average of over uh, three uh, independent runs, you can also see that uh, the models with the bigger um, memory size, they have faster training and uh, after 10 epochs, uh, 
uh, of training, they have uh, lowest um, uh, loss on training set. And then we score, uh, scored our models uh, with um, uh, calculated blue score uh, for all the modifications. And you can see here that uh, actually adding uh, MAM tokens uh, to, uh, improves a bit uh, baseline. So if baseline is about 19, uh, then like adding five gives you 19 point, uh, 17, 19, 15, 19, 40. So it's like one, mm, like small improvement in, in, in the blue score. And uh, memory bottleneck, uh, it, it, it can learn some translations, but quality is not uh, very good. And if we, uh, we look at the base model, which is a bigger model, we can see that uh, adding memory uh, adds one, about uh, one point of uh, blue score. So if baseline is uh, 24.65, then when you add 20 tokens, uh, memory tokens, then you have 25.65 uh, it's, it's not very big improvement, uh, but we see if we have bigger model, then we have a larger improvement actually. Uh, but uh, conclusion uh, is that actually adding this memory token improves uh, performance of our uh, model. So uh, let's look uh, what will happen uh, if, uh, for example, maybe e uh, memory tokens are important for training, but not important for inference. You can imagine that after training, if you remove all your memory tokens, uh, but your model can still demonstrate good performance, yes? To check this, we just uh, scored our models uh, when we remove uh, memory tokens uh, from the input sequence. And you can see here that uh, here, uh, baseline model uh, is shown with this uh, green line and uh, we have two models uh, with 10 memory tokens and 20 memory tokens and after training for the uh, corresponding memory size they have better performance than baseline but if we set uh, a number of memory tokens to zero so feed them like uh, raw sequence uh, of tokens, then we, we see significant drop in performance. And uh, you, you can also see here that uh, model which, were which, which was trained with uh, 20 memory tokens has a worse re results than the model trained with uh, 10 memory tokens. And it, it is interesting that uh, this drop uh, in performance uh, like, uh, is gradual. So if we say, if we have a 10 trained model with 10 memory tokens and then uh, calculate its blue score on sequences with five memory tokens, we see some drop in performance, but it's not like maybe uh, catastrophic. You can see that on the smaller models, we have a uh, blue score about 19. And, and here we have blue score about uh, 18. And then we reduce uh, amount of memory from five to two. We still have some reasonable like uh, blue score. Even if memory size is five times smaller than during training, which means that uh, even with this reduced memory size, our model still able to handle uh, and to use uh, the memory. 
because if we remove uh, memory at all, we will see much worse uh, drop in performance. And uh, also, if we add additional memory tokens uh, to the memory, we see drop in performance. So here we add 10 tokens to uh, our model, which was, which was trained uh, with 10 memory tokens. And when it, it, it has like twice less uh, blue score. And then we add uh, 10 more tokens and have like even again divide by two blue score compared to the 20 tokens. And the same is with the architecture with which, were, which uh, was trained with the 20 memory tokens, which means that uh, during training, the model uh, learns to use a memory of specific size. And if we reduce this size, or if we increase this size, memory, uh, then our system performs uh, worse. But on the other hand, we see that uh, this comparison of model without memory tokens and with memory tokens, uh, you can see that model, uh, model really uses this memory in the computation and in, uh, it is needed to have a better performance than baseline model. So, okay, and now we are going to one of the, I think, mo most interesting part of my, of my talk. Uh, so uh, let's uh, take a look what is happening inside the attention maps uh, of our uh, architecture. So we have uh, in transformer architecture, we have uh, many attention heads to perform uh, this uh, self-attention and accumulation of information over the sequence. And uh, we have uh, uh, like reviewed uh, what is uh, happening after the training and, and what is happening during training with the, these attentions. And they uh, allows us to better understand results of our experiments. And uh, to better understand what will be presented uh, further, just let me uh, introduce and let me guide you how to read these attention maps. So as we are, uh, first of all, we are concentrated on the encoder part of our uh, transformer. Uh, here is uh, the um, diagram of uh, the attention. So for every element of our sequence, um, we are updating uh, elements which are uh, ordered uh, here ver vertically. So say we are starting from the first row and we need to update this memory token and we accumulate all the information from the, these all other tokens. And uh, here the color denotes how much attention or what is the contribution of uh, given element of the sequence to the update of uh, the current element. And then we go row by row and updating our elements. And uh, uh, we can say that we are uh, um, moving information, like processing, uh, we have information flow from these top uh, elements, uh, like uh, uh, input tokens, to the output tokens on the left. Uh, and in, in uh, classic uh, transformer architecture, we have only this uh, sequence part and have no memory part. And then our attention map is only this uh, square here, which is uh, denoted here as sequence to sequence. So we like uh, update information. So we copy information from uh, all elements to sequence to the elements of the sequence themselves. But with memory architecture, we have three additional, additional blocks of our attention maps. Uh, the first one is a sequence to memory. And uh, in this block, attention uh, indicates how different uh, token representations are copied like 
transferred to the memory uh, tokens. And uh, then we have memory to memory block. Uh, here we can see how one, uh, how memory tokens influence each other. And then we have memory to sequence uh, block, which we can see that this is attention to read uh, some information from memory into and write it down into the token representations. So this is how we can read uh, our attention maps. And maybe if uh, there are some questions uh, about uh, these attention map representations, it's better to ask them now because uh, you will miss all the information on further slide if you have no clear idea how this uh, works. So I suggest you, you can ask maybe questions how to understand these uh, attention maps right now. Okay, I will try. Uh, uh, the first question is, um, why do you uh, think that uh, information uh, in a particular layer uh, at time step t uh, represents uh, talking at time step t at input? Uh, for instance, we can see at this map that uh, when we encode uh, length talking at the output, we look not at the length uh, talking at the input, but at the next talking. So uh, it seems that uh, the diagonal is shifted uh, to the right in this particular uh, map. Uh, so is it reasonable to suppose that uh, that this output at uh, length really represents uh, the length token and not, for example, the next token. And uh, can these representations shift, uh, for instance, in the first layer to the right and in the last layer to the left again, or uh, uh, somehow other shift? Uh, yes, strictly speaking, uh, the right word here will be, it's not representation of talking, but representation corresponding to the token of the input sequence. So in the input sequence, we have some length token, and then uh, we update this representation, uh, which is corresponding to the length token, but maybe after that, it will not be representing somehow this length token. But this position of length token, subtoken and the we update vector representation for this corresponding to this position and to this token and the input sequence. So this is if, if we want to make it clear. But actually when we, uh, if you look on these attention maps you can see that uh, as we have uh, different heads, different heads have different diagonals, some diagonals shifted, some are not shifted, and actually, it's uh, like I think that it's 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 a question for some discussion. What is really represented by these uh, uh, vectors corresponding, which are corresponding to the subtokens of uh, the input sequence? Okay. And the next question: uh, uh, Am I right that we have this kind of uh, map? for each uh, layer and for each uh, attention head individually. So uh, to summarize, uh, we don't, uh, just one map is not enough. We need yeah, yes, yes. many, many maps and we need to study all of them. And is there any uh, technique to combine all these maps? Probably it's difficult to study six by, uh, I don't know, 12 number of heads uh, maps. And is it any technique to uh, summarize these maps into uh, some kind of uh, simpler uh, attention maps or other type of plots? Uh, I suggest to discuss it uh, after the presentation. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, because um, it, it, it might be a lengthy discussion. 
So uh, just j just remind us uh, about this question after we have, we will finish. So any other technical questions? If if somebody cannot understand how to uh, read these attention maps. Okay, if everybody is fine uh, with this, so let's go to the inside the transformer brain map. So here is a map, maps for uh, overview of the maps, uh, all maps for uh, our uh, architecture with six layers in transformer, uh, in encoder and six layer in decoder. So we have on the left hand side is encoder. And here we have like layer one, eight heads, layer two, eight heads, layer three, layer four, layer five, and layer six. And we will uh, go into details on the uh, next slides here is just an overview of uh, the all uh, maps which we have. And we have also six layers in our, um, on the decoder sides side and uh, I will show only on the attention heads which uh, are represent attention uh, from uh, attention to encoder output. So I am not presenting here attention maps uh, from decoded sequence to decoded tokens. So only attention maps from decoded uh, from the decoding uh, output to the representation of the input sequence, memory and input sequence. And these uh, decoder uh, attention uh, maps here are in uh, blue. So uh, let's take uh, some examples of attention patterns which uh, we can find on these attention maps. First of all, if uh, we look uh, at some intermediate layers after training in encoder, uh, we can see here that uh, we have uh, first attention which can be uh, understood as a uh, writing to memory. So we have like uh, some memory tokens, and uh, we have a uh, strong uh, attention to some particular uh, input uh, vectors corresponding to input uh, subtokens, like here is technique, then and we clunk and intelligence. And uh, we can speculate that uh, this head is related to extracting uh, this information from these uh, subtokens and uh, writing them down in these specific memory tokens. On the other hand, here we can see a pattern uh, which is consistent with uh, like uh, rewriting or fusing representations in the nearby memory tokens. So we uh, take uh, like uh, information in nearby uh, memory tokens here and add them to the uh, neighbor uh, memory tokens. So it's like averaging of information, uh, so to say. And uh, also uh, we can find some other very interesting patterns. Actually, I, I was very amused and I found them. You can see here like a two parallel diagonals here. Uh, which means that the, these can be seen as a like coping operation uh, with preserving order of values. So we have some values here, and uh, we have similar like like this like fusion operation for the first uh, three memory tokens, four memory tokens, and then we have uh, copy operation when we copy these four first memory to tokens into the five next memory tokens. Like here we copy them, uh, like preserving the order. And then for the fifth uh, memory token in this group, we copy the last memory token, uh, like third memory token here. And uh, it's actually very, very interesting. And uh, on the other hand, we can see 
uh, uh, these patterns where we have a strong diagonal attention, uh, which means that uh, during this operation, uh, this head just copies the same value from the input to the output. So you can see here that uh, clearly we, we, we can see like uh, three different blocks in our memory. Two blocks here, they perform something like uh, fusion operations. Uh, like uh, it's not blocks in memory, it's like a blocks in our um, memory controller, in our operations which we perform on the, uh, with our memory. And also this store or amplifying operation here. And uh, it, it, these operations are grouped in, in the same uh, head. So, uh, and uh, if we look at the decoder attention maps, uh, here you can see that we have uh, uh, something like uh, reading operations. So for the different tokens, uh, we have different attention to, to the different uh, parts in our memory. And it, it's interesting that we can also see here uh, these uh, like block structure in our memory. So we have uh, this attention is the same for the first four tokens and then the same attention for the next three tokens and maybe for the next two tokens and for the last one token. And uh, it, it like, um, it suggests that uh, the content of these uh, four memory tokens are like semantically similar or plays the same role uh, semantically for uh, update of uh, the representations for our uh, tokens to be decoded. And it's very interesting. Uh, it, it's like that during training, the model uh, learned to represent uh, something in memory in this blockwise manner and maybe it's due to that we have some dropout for example some noise in our sequence and then averaging all the representations of few to few memory tokens give you better fidelity so it's the model will be more robust to to the input um, to the noise in the input sequence so okay, let's uh, turn back to to the our um, uh, overall picture of uh, attentions and uh, how we can uh, what is happening uh, when we go uh, when we we go from one layer to another and uh, it, it, we see here uh, the picture which can be consistently understood as a, a reading from memory in the first layers so uh, look at this uh, here in this uh, like uh, in the first layer we have some attention in this uh, top right part and uh, on the second layer too it's this part here and here and here which means that uh, we read some uh, vectors from uh, uh, vector representations of uh, input tokens to the memory tokens. And uh, here and here almost all had his, uh, uh, has this uh, reading pattern. And we're also starting to have uh, end reading from memory pattern too. Here some reading from memory. And But if you look at the um, final layers, uh, for example, it's uh, the attention of uh, the sixth layer. You see that almost no reading here. So uh, sixth layer is no head uh, is performing reading. In the fifth layer, only two heads or two or three heads have reading. Like in fourth layer, also two heads has reading patterns. But uh, we have more uh, in memory attention uh, in these uh, later layers. Uh, we have start to see this attention in the like third layer and then uh, fourth and fifth layer and uh, sixth layer. We have uh, more and more this inside memory attention. So some copying operation. You see these uh, like diagonal patterns here 
which I have uh, showed you on the previous slide, but also some reading from input sequence. And uh, in the last layer, uh, no reading into memory, no reading from memory, only strong diagonal for the uh, vectors which uh, correspond corresponds to the input sequence and uh, some like copying operations uh, and uh, also diagonal operations into the memory. So then uh, we look uh, at the decoder side. We can see that uh, in the first layer, some heads just empty uh, and uh, but like couple of heads with uh, attention for maybe some elements of the input sequence and some elements of the memory. But uh, uh, not, uh, we have no very rich uh, reading patterns in the earlier layers of decoder. And uh, I think it, it's reasonable because uh, on the first layers, uh, like uh, local information of uh, the target sequence is more important than the information from the source uh, sequence. But on the, if we go deeper in the decoder, we can see that we have more and more elaborate patterns for memory reading is here, here, uh, here, maybe, here. So we consistently have like, uh, one, two, three heads reading from uh, memory and uh, all other attention is generally uh, around uh, diagonal. So if uh, the order of words in German and English is uh, more or less similar, so it, it's uh, expected that, that we will have attention around uh, like ordered around the diagonal elements. <clears throat> and on the last layer, uh, we have some attention to memory, but not uh, as complex as in the intermediate layers. Uh, so this is, gives us a, like a general picture, which is consistent uh, with how we will uh, hypothesis uh, this memory should be used by the memory processing system. So first we start from reading to memory, then some memory in memory processing, uh, and then uh, reading from memory to generate translation. And actually for me personally, it was uh, real, real fun. And I was very excited to, to see all this pattern emerging. And it was like um, discovering like new continents in the tension uh, maps. So, but, what will happen if uh, we go to the architecture with the memory bottleneck? So as you remember, this uh, architecture is not very good in terms of uh, blue scores, but still it was able to understand how to translate from German to English. And uh, so here I just want to remind how, how it looks like. And um, here we have a uh, separate tension maps in, in, in the decoder and uh, it's um, uh, attention patterns uh, for the architecture with the four layers in encoder and four layers in decoder. So it's small architecture. And as I've said before, we have separate attentions here. One attention is attention which is uh, uh, used to update memory tokens. And this is, these uh, atten attention block, attention heads, uh, which are like reading from memory plus sequence to memory. So uh, we uh, attention uh, uh, to update every memory token. It's a memory bottleneck of 20. We attend to every memory token and to every element in the input sequence. And this is a uh, memory to sequence attention uh, this uh, block here, when we have updated our memory tokens, then we use them to update uh, uh, tokens corresponding to our input sequence. 
And what you can see here, and uh, it's, it, it was uh, really impressive to see that, uh, let's, let's go layer by layer. In the first layer, you see here like a reading, a massive reading from input sequence. And uh, with, uh, uh, but interestingly, uh, this reading is uh, performed with the three, three, three separate uh, streams. Uh, one stream on the top here, uh, this one, you can see that uh, these activations, uh, attention uh, values are not ordered here. So it seems like that uh, the top memory tokens, like uh, maybe three or four tokens, they are reading uh, global information from our sequence. And then we have uh, memory tokens, which uh, copy some information from uh, the um, input sequence, like the, the, this inter this, uh, the second block in the reversed order and the last block in the, like, in the same order as it presented in the input sequence. And um, uh, on the second layer, you can see here that only two heads has attention to the input sequence and all other heads have no attention to the input sequence. So these are like diagonal patterns. So either it's shifted or it's like just uh, the same pattern here. And also some uh, attention inside the memory. So, so some in-memory operation. And then if we look at the layers three and at layer four, so no attention to the input sequence. So our network, it, it decided not to invest any attention in the representations which are corresponded, which uh, are, uh, which corresponds to the uh, tokens of the input sequence. And if you look uh, at the memory to sequence patterns, you also can see here that it's, it, this um, attention pattern is very similar uh, we, uh, what we get if we have uh, like purely untrained architecture. You will see on the first slide that uh, these uh, kind of patterns is um, the same as um, during uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, first stages of training. And um, so, uh, and then if, uh, which means that uh, in the encoder we have a thing that um, um, our um, transformer is not caring anymore about uh, token representations it uh, attend only to the memory. And if we uh, will look at the decoder side, we also see that uh, attention, all the attention is directed to the memory, not to the representation of uh, the input sequence tokens. And uh, <coughs> for all uh, layers, we have uh, this um, pattern of attention. And uh, I think that it's uh, um, very interesting result that our architecture uh, decided to, to look only at uh, memory and use only memory to represent our sequence and not copy back to the sequence, like to vectors corresponding to sequence tokens, uh, our um, representations. So, okay. Uh, what are conclusions of uh, our study? First, uh, we see that uh, memory improves performance of uh, transformer. So it, it, it maybe it's not very dramatically, but still it adds uh, to the performance of uh, the hour of our architecture. And uh, on the other hand, uh, when we look on attention maps, we can see that uh, science that attention can be trained as a memory controller. 
So we can see all these uh, reading to memory, memory processing, and uh, copying from uh, memory uh, operations. And uh, on the other hand, our experiments with uh, changing memory sites um, memory size of the memory controller uh, of the already trained uh, architecture shows that these memory controllers still have some ability to generalize and if you change memory size it's still able to use it in uh, its processing and uh, the last results which is related to the memory, memory bottleneck architecture is the token wise representation of sequence can be replaced uh, by fixed size representation in memory. So you don't need to have uh, uh, the, the same number of uh, elements to represent, the same number of factors to represent uh, your input sequence, but uh, it, uh, then you use this memory bottleneck architecture, you will have uh, degraded uh, performance. So that's uh, basically all for the main part of the presentation. Uh, I have actually like additional results section with the five more slides which were not included in the paper because they were uh, obtained after this, uh, these experiments. But I suggest uh, first to maybe to have some questions and discussions uh, because uh, maybe it, it, it's uh, challenging to have uh, such long uh, presentation with uh, this uh, many uh, results and so let's discuss it and uh, if uh, then somebody will would like to go for the additional results well, we can do this afterwards so okay questions please uh, I want to ask just once again uh, do you add uh, the same uh, positional embedding to all memory tokens no so it, it's uh, we treated memory tokens as a, like a, as an any other token so if you have a first uh, 10 tokens to be represented by memory tokens so like you're repeating memory token 10 times. So uh, every one of these memory tokens will have its uh, unique positional encoding added to this memory token. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So any other questions? Uh, so you were showing that uh, in the model where memory is treated separately, like uh, most of the information flow goes through the memory and uh, kind of none is going through the main part, which uh, yes. you say deteriorates the performance. So I was wondering if uh, there is any way, let's say, to regularize the uh, for instance, sparsity in the memory so that uh, the information flow is enforced through the main part of the model. Because like, it seems like the architecture seems super interesting and super promising, but it is kind of unfortunate that uh, the performance drops due to the entire information flow going through the, uh, through the memory part. So I was wondering like uh, if, if one could consider regularization to like even out the information flows through both parts of models and could it possibly return the benchmarks to the kind of usual levels so what what what, what uh, sorry what, uh, what kind of regularization you suggest uh, that i'm not sure about like I would imagine maybe like sparsity of uh, uh, sparsity of this uh, memory channel. Mm -hmm. So it's like adding more memory tokens to the memory. 
or uh, what what kind of sparsifying or some specific pattern of attention which is not uh, dense but sparse so i was thinking like uh maybe i just getting totally wrong could could be that too i was just thinking if like uh uh if like readout could be limited or like uh, the total number of activations in the memory channel could be limited provided mm -hmm. the very same size could it possibly enforce the stronger information flow from the main part of the model i don't know actually i have uh, in additional results i have an experiment where we have uh, i have a skip connection so instead of uh, forcing update of uh, these uh, sequence tokens in memory bottleneck. Uh, I have added a uh, straight uh, connection from uh, input uh, to the output layer of uh, the encoder. So I just uh, like move or uh, for uh, all the information from the input token directly to the all layers of the decoder. Uh, and it helps uh, for performance. I can show you here. That sounds even better. It, 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 it's like uh, this. So here it's it's memory bottleneck, and it's uh, I've just modified layer. Then I'm not updating uh, these uh, vectors for uh, input sequence but just copying them to the output of uh, the layer. And that's it. And uh, so uh, only updating and processing is performed uh, here in this part, in the left part. And uh, if, if you look at the pictures, uh, the figures here on the table, so we have baseline 19, uh, like uh, we have, uh, 20 uh, memory tokens and it's 19.14 uh, and if we have memory, memory bottleneck we have 10 and if we have a uh, memory bottleneck with this skip connection we have a uh, 16.45 of blue score so it improves uh, this uh, uh, memory bottleneck, but but not still not uh, sufficient to improve uh, or to reach uh, the baseline or uh, memory augmented uh, transformer. Thank you. I have also a question about this uh, bottleneck idea. Uh, initially, the attention mechanism uh, was proposed. Uh, to get rid of that bottleneck. So basically, sequence to sequence had that bottleneck that uh, uh, independent of the input uh, sequence length, we try to, uh, to extract all information from the input sequence into a fixed sized vector. And uh, to get rid of that bottleneck, Bogdan Al Nikolai, we can't hear you. Nikolai. So, so I suggest that maybe 